The buildup of snow and ice on road surfaces presents a situation to motorists that is both inconvenient and dangerous. It's critical for road maintenance crews to equip themselves with the most effective snow and ice control equipment available. Traditionally, rock salt and other chemicals have been used to melt and loosen the bond between snow, ice, and the pavement. Liquid de-icers and anti-icers are now the preferred method of returning ice-covered roads to bare pavement conditions. Veritech Industries Incorporated of Garfield, Minnesota specializes in liquid de-icer production systems. We pioneered commercial salt brine making equipment designed specifically for use by Department of Transportation maintenance personnel. The use of liquid salt brine has several advantages over other de-icing and anti-icing methods. Salt brine is simply faster and more effective in penetrating snow and ice layers than traditional rock salt alone. It also enables the pre-wetting of road surfaces before a storm that significantly reduces the amount of ice bonding to the pavement. Dry rock salt bounces and rolls on the road surface during spreading operations, leaving an uneven application. The next time a plow comes through, much of it is scraped off or pushed off to the side, thereby requiring another application. Liquid salt brine enables an even application on road surfaces, significantly reducing material waste and labor costs. In fact, tests conducted by the Minnesota Department of Transportation showed that by using salt brine as a first strike weapon against snow and ice covered roads, a savings of at least 30% on all materials hauled out can be realized. Reduced material usage also results in less environmental impact. Veritex salt brine production systems are easy to operate. They're the most economical answer for fast, simple conversion of solids to liquids for use in pavement pre-wetting operations and highway maintenance. The Veritex salt brine production system converts road salt to salt brine immediately and automatically. Connect it to water and power, fill the salt hopper and you're ready to go. Measuring only 5 feet by 10 feet, Veritech systems are compact and readily comply with stringent environmental guidelines Minnesota has required for secondary containment regulations. Features include heavy-duty one-piece molded plastic construction, 2,000 gallon per hour throughput, a holding capacity of up to 600 gallons, complete salinity adjustment, a remote pump switch, automatic refill and shutoff, a solid warranty package backed by quality customer service. This video will illustrate procedures described in the instruction manual included with your system. Use it for training and for future reference. It's important to read all instructions carefully before installing, operating or servicing your equipment. Before we begin with the filling and operating instructions, please observe the following safety information. Keep the work area clean and free of clutter. This salt brine production system is designed for indoor use only. Outdoor use will void the warranty, can lead to frozen water lines, hopper tanks, and can cause permanent damage. The unit must be set on and make full contact with a level, solid surface. Do not position it on a soft, uneven surface or prop it up or shim it in any manner. This will immediately void the warranty. It must be level front to back and side to side. When your system arrives, be sure to inspect it for any damage. Make sure that the pump is firmly seated on the floor of the main brine tank. The pump discharge piping is equipped with a rubber slip joint coupling to allow for pump removal. The hose clamps around the coupling should be tight. Be sure to check for tightness of the pump or piping which may sometimes vibrate loose during shipment. Drain all liquids from the system that may collect during transportation and storage. The drains for each tank are piped through the wall of the secondary tank independently. The two small threaded plugs on the lower side of the end ribs are the drains for the secondary tank. We will discuss the importance of draining later in this video. It's important that the system be provided with an adequate water supply. A one inch line is recommended and can be either hard piped or hose connected. A shutoff valve installed before the system is also recommended. 
The system is equipped with a 110 volt 20 amp ground fault interrupter circuit to prevent a shock hazard. Be sure to provide electrical service that adequately supplies a 20 amp load. Most normal wall receptacles will suffice. Perform regular maintenance on the system. This is covered later in the maintenance section of this video. We felt that a quick run through of how the system operates would be beneficial. Veritex systems are constructed of three separate tanks. This graphic shows how the hopper tank and the main brine tank are inserted and positioned inside the outer secondary containment tank. First, salt is dumped into the hopper tank. Water is forced up through the salt bed and overflows through the downspouts into the main brine tank below. Since the brine is most often too rich in salinity percentages, we turn down the amount of water going into the hopper and turn up the brine dilute valve to dilute the brine mixture. When the system is filled, it shuts itself off and the brine is then ready to be pumped into your truck tanks or storage vessels. Now, we'll take you step by step through the filling, operating, maintenance and troubleshooting procedures. Carefully fill the hopper tank with road salt. For the best possible throughput performance, fill only to the bottom of the overflow screens. Filling any higher will plug and clog the screens, affecting the overall throughput of the system. Be sure to remove any debris such as wood chips, grain, etc. The 10-foot length of the Veritex system can easily accommodate up to a 9-foot end loader bucket, which is common at many DOT truck stations. Be sure that all valves are turned off. Turn on the water supply to the system. The main water service piping is equipped with a non-electric hydraulic diaphragm valve and a float valve assembly for automatic fill and refill capabilities. Fresh water will flow into the diaphragm valve continuously as the main brine tank fills. A slight dripping of water out of the float during filling will occur. Be certain that the nut on the back side of the float is tight and not leaking. As the tank fills, the float rises and shuts off the flow of water through the diaphragm valve. It is normal for the diaphragm valve to emit a vibrating sound as it begins to close off the water supply to the system. Open the water infeed valve allowing water to enter the hopper tank infeed manifold at the bottom of the hopper tank. Once the hopper tank has filled, brine will begin flowing through the overflow downspout pipes, filling the main brine tank below. At this point, it is important to take a salinity test. Salinity testing is important for one major reason, overall effectiveness at low temperatures. Contrary to popular belief, more salt is not necessarily better. As shown by this graph, too much or too little sodium significantly alters the freezing point of sodium chloride brines. The optimum salinity shown is 23.3% of salt in the water by weight. This equates to approximately 89% saturation of salt in the water. Testing for salinity using a hydrometer is a simple procedure. Hydrometers are available from Veritech in two styles. Both can be used effectively. One style indicates the salinity as a percent by weight of salt in water. The other style indicates the percentage of saturation of salt in water. Using a common household pitcher or similar container, collect a small amount of brine flowing from each downspout. It's important to collect from both points since their saturation levels differ due to their proximity to the fresh water intake. Insert the hydrometer into the container as shown. Using either style hydrometer, our goal is to achieve a 23.3% water salinity by weight or an 89% saturation of salt in the water. If the reading is high, partially close the water infeed valve and open the brine dilute valve allowing fresh water to mix with the brine. Continue testing and adjusting the fresh water flow until the salinity percentage is correct as shown. This will provide the best overall low temperature ice control when using salt brine. As long as the salt hopper tank is at least half full of salt, the valve positions can remain unchanged with no further adjustments necessary. Salt brine does not separate or settle out. Once you have achieved